Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is one that I actually asked you guys, what do you want to see? And so many of you requested an updated tack room tour. So here we have it. I can't lie though, I have done a bit of a tidy up, a bit of a clean before I show you what it's like inside. But I'm gonna say most of the time, it's not too bad. This is what it looks like. So anyway, come in, come in. Starting off, we have the door that I've literally just walked through. And on the back of it, I like to keep some extra coats, a lot of high vises for hacking with the horses, especially on the road. Um, so that's a little bit boring. We'll quickly move on to over here where I have, um, I actually have my breastplate on the first one. Um, I have a spare bit and then I also have Joey's bridle because Joey is the horse that is ridden the most. This is his show jumping bridle slash his hacking everyday sort of bridles so I like to keep them on these hooks here I should really get a third one because I sometimes find I'm a little bit lazy and this just kind of gets overwhelmed with things um, then if we move on we have all of my saddles which are from Voltaire Design and I am so so grateful to have them as a sponsor again my bridles are from and breastplates from Voltaire Design as well um, but we have quite a few so at the top we have my essentials saddle then we have my um, Oh, let's, should I like take, I don't know, should I do a little sneak peek? I mean, all of these saddles I've actually had for over three years now, I think. So um, they did say to me that they're very kindly gonna swap them around. Um, but anyway, this is my custom one for Joey. It has Sorosky, Soros, I can never say it properly. It has Sorosky crystals on, which is very fancy. And then it also has custom piping. So this is in a sort of like creamy kind of color because I thought I want to go for like a neutral color so it goes with everything. But anyway, this is my show jumping saddle. This is the um, Lexington, I believe, the Lexington jump saddle. It's a mono flap as well and close contact. And then down here we have Casper's saddle. I'll just take his girth off. We will um, show you. Oh my gosh, I really need to clean my stirrups. My saddle is actually clean. Like I cleaned my saddle, but I just have not cleaned my stirrups. I took Casper on the forest the other day. So excuse that. But anyway, Casper has a, um, this is the Stuttgart. It's a GP saddle, which is great for Casper. Now he's, I was gonna say he's a retired horse. He's definitely not a retired horse. He's just like a, a happy hacker that does a little bit of everything and is a bit of a YouTube horse. So um, I just, he, now he's getting older and has a bit of arthritis. I just kind of keep him ticking over and just do things that he enjoys and keep him active. Um, and then this is Casper's girth. And I quite like to keep my girths on top of my saddle on the saddle cover because it makes me clean my girths. If I kind of just, you know, have them in a certain place, they never get cleaned because I can sometimes be in a bit of a rush. I live a busy life, but then I have some other girths here. So if I was doing cross country with Casper, I'd use this one on him. Then I just have a spare. This is actually a really nice new one that I haven't actually used yet, but I'm leaving for nice things. But anyway, moving swiftly on, um, I don't really know what side to go through. Down here I have my first aid kit. I also have some spare buckets and this is kind of become a bit of a mess corner so we're going to ignore that i have lots of really weird things here as well like i have a voltaire design oh that has a spider on goodbye mr spider goodbye anyway i have a voltaire design umbrella which is also a house for spiders um which is actually quite useful if we're ever filming and it's raining and we need to like cover the cameras so useful to have if you watched my stable renovation series you'll know that a lot of the furniture or almost yeah pretty much all the furniture that i have in my tack room i thrifted and it's second hand from like charity shops so this is my um sideboard thing that i'm pretty sure an old grandma used to own because when it was in the charity shop it was displayed with loads of like china plates and old teapots and teacups and that kind of thing and when i told my parents I wanted to get this and I showed them the picture of what I'd bought. They were like, Esme, what is wrong with you? Why have you bought grandma furniture? But it was actually the greatest plan ever. I even measured it so I could make sure my helmets would fit because it has so many shelves. I have all my helmets displayed. Um, also, one of my favorite bits, the little glass cabinets that are here. I took all the shelving out and now, so in here is where I keep Casper's bridle. Um, which I actually cleaned before filming this video. So Casper has a nice clean bridal. Anyway, um, also thought I would address the elephant in the room. I know a lot of people are gonna be like Esme. Oh my goodness, no girl needs this many helmets, which is very true. 
I'm very lucky to have Charles Owen as my helmet sponsor. And I think I have almost every different type of helmet they sell because the way my job kind of works is every now and again they'll be like, uh, Esme, can you take some photos in this particular helmet? And you know, I got the helmet here. So um, I would say my go-to helmets, which I love to wear probably the most, are the halos, um, which are these ones here. This is my, I feel like some of my helmets I have like really fond memories of, don't worry, I won't be rambling on for too much about it, but this is my South Africa and Botswana helmet that I wore on my safari. So that's got a lot of memories. And then I have my like own helmets that I have in collaboration with Charles Owen. So um, we have my Esme JS1 Pro, we have my Esme MS1 Pro, um, we have my Esme Cosmic, which actually has a red post hat silk on at the moment, because. I was going to say the other day, that was actually a few weeks ago, but I feel like, you know when you have to do so many things that it feels like it was only yesterday. But anyway, um, that's that. And then we have the Kylos, which are the newer helmet by Charles Owen, which are very snazzy. And then if I come over here, I have one of my favourites, which is probably my most jazzy helmet that I own. This is my show one. Um, and this has like all of the crystals on top, which I just want to say, I am so, so lucky to have this tack room and have all of the incredible, gorgeous, beautiful tack in here because especially when I was growing up, I never had like a tack room. I would literally just like keep my tack in my parents' garage where they kept like their cars and stuff or like in my dad's man shed. <laughs> so um, to have my own tack room, you guys know from when I basically created all of this, like so much blood, sweat and literally blood actually, I think at one point, but so much blood, sweat and tears has gone into this tack room, like building it, you know, painted all the walls. I think all the walls have about four coats of paint. So there's been a lot of hard work into this and, you know, doing up all the furniture and that kind of thing. So very, very grateful. Also down here, I have my treat jars. I do need to um, put some more treats in here because um, yeah, as you can see, my boys get pampered. Um, so they have all the different flavors of treats. That one is completely empty. Also to be a little bit extra, I do have a plant pot. So I have, um, I have a fake plant. I'm not normally a fake plant kind of gal. Like I do love my plants. So if you watch my cottage renovation series in the cottage, you'll know I have a lot of real plants, but I do have fake ones in here because unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, it's kind of good because I have a lot of wall space and also um, you don't really want people to be able to see in your tack room and see all your nice things. But um, anyway, there are no windows in here, so there's no natural sunlight. So if I had any real plants, they would be gone. So <laughs> there we go. And then in this little cabinet here, I have Joey's um, dressage bridle. So that is um, my black bridle. So that just stays in there. That is actually nice and clean too. I have another little fake plant. Again, this one's quite extra. I quite like how it kind of like hangs down. Um, also, I wanted to like do it up really cool. So I have, um, this is one of my favorite parts are the lights that I have up here. They just look really snazzy and um, they're, they're nice and warm toned. This is definitely a very cozy tack room. That is for sure. Um, so yeah, that is my grandma um, sideboard full of helmets. That is that section. <laughs> Also, in front of my area where I have all my helmets, I actually have this, I don't really know what to call it, like my seat, I guess. I was gonna put a sofa in here, but now thinking about it, I'm so glad I went for this because I feel like a sofa would make it feel a lot smaller in here. And also, like there probably just wouldn't really be enough room. This is fake leather, so it's great because it means that if a lot of the time when I put my boots on, I have like muddy wellies and often like this gets really muddy, so I can just wipe it off. Um, but also it's nice to have somewhere to sit down to put your boots on and everything. So um, this also ends up as kind of like a dumping ground. So anything that doesn't get put away, it just goes on this seat. So again, this was from a charity shop as well. But anyway, moving on to my chest of drawers. Yes, I do have even more helmets. So actually some of the helmets up there that I did show you, I mean, my dad's helmet's up there. My brother's helmet is up there. My boyfriend's helmet is up there. Some of you might be wondering, Esme, does your mum not have a helmet? My mum is very happy to not have a helmet. She she's not she's not a horse rider. It's not her kind of thing. Um, but anyway, actually, my dad doesn't really ride either. I don't really have a horse suitable for my dad to ride, but he, he wears one for lunging the horses. So anyway, um, very kindly when I'm away and he looks after them. But here we go. We have more helmets. These are my Esme Luna, and I'd say they're probably my favourite and most worn helmets. Not just because they're mine and they're the ones I designed with Charles Owen but also because they are just so practical because they are the matte kind of color. I find they're not too 
out there, especially if you're just having like a chilled ride or going for a hack or things like that. Um, also they're waterproof and we have a lot of raining over here in England. Um, but they do have a little bit of sparkle on the rim, which is like, a, I feel like it's the perfect level of sparkle where it's not too out there, but then if you just want a little bit of something. Um, and then obviously I have four of them because they come in short peak, wide peak, navy and black. So there's like four different combinations. So um, obviously we have to get photos and things for Charles Owen when they first came out and I just wear them a lot. I wear the short ones for dressage, the long ones for hacking and show jumping and yeah also you might be admiring the beautiful mirror I have here. Again thrifted that second hand. Um, these mirrors they look super fancy and super wild but they're actually cheaper than buying a brand new mirror because people don't really want mirrors like these anymore. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there like me that are like, that looks really cool. I feel like my tack room does have a bit of an aesthetic in the sense of kind of old fashioned, back in the day, riding, kind of like, I'd say it's almost like a Ralph Lauren aesthetic, <laughs> almost, if you know what I mean. And if you have been to a Ralph Lauren shop, kind of like that, I feel like dark wood is really coming back. Um, Anyway, sorry, moving on. I also have some secondhand photos of horses that I thrifted, which are actually, I think they're prints and the prints are over a hundred years old. So that was quite cool. Um, again, they really weren't that much money at all. So I just put them up to decorate the tack room, make it feel a little bit more cozy. Um, but also I thought I would go through what's in my drawers because I am a nosy person and I love to know what people have stored in different things. Um, this drawer here is my everything drawer. I have um, high vis. I have high vis and actually lots of different colors because I hack my horses a lot and I'm just, I'm just a bit extra like that. Um, I also have some scissors because you can never have enough pair of scissors. And then I also have a hoof pick. The two things that I lose all the time, so I never lose them. I have them in a special place. Um, I also have some like extra brow bounds in here and that kind of thing. But um, anyway, that's kind of like a little bit of a mess drawer. I feel like a lot of my drawers are mess drawers, so you have to bear with me on this. Next, I have my glove drawer, also in my glove drawer. I have a hairbrush if I ever need to brush my hair after riding because I have helmet hair and I'm filming straight after. Um, I have lots of different like gloves. So I have like winter gloves, competition gloves, my everyday gloves. These are my favorite ones. These I've literally had for since 2020. So a long, long time, maybe even before 2020. I really do need to wash some of my gloves though because they are disgusting. So anyway, let's shove that closed. And then in my last drawer, very oddly, I have all my pom-poms because um, I ride in a skull cap for cross country, arena cross country, sometimes for hacking as well. Um, so Lemieux very kindly send me a lot of hat silks to go with my sets. And I like to take the pom-poms off just because then they're a little bit less bulky, the hat silks. And also sometimes I like to interchange the pom-pom depending on what color I'm wearing. So I have like a black one. I feel like pom-poms are always really fun, especially in the winter because I love wearing like a woolly hat with a little pom-pom on. But anyway, um, next drawer, we have the actual hat silks. Um, oh, this one, I haven't actually taken the pom-pom off because it is a new one. This was for one of the Black Friday colors, which is quite snazzy. And then I just have so many different hat silks. I have some of my hat silks that I did with Charles Owen, which are very cool because they have all the vents on. So if you have a sweaty head like me, and then I literally just have, yeah, pretty much all the different colors. So I am very lucky to have such generous sponsors. So it's it used to be all color coded, organized. That doesn't stay like that for long. So I have just kind of got to the stage where in these drawers I have given up. But anyway, let's shut that up. Then on the drawer after that, I have all of um, my ear bonnets for the horses. So um, this is actually one of my competition ones. Normally I try and keep my competition ones in my gentleman's wardrobe, which I'll show you in a bit. But this is obviously, I think this is a new one, which I just haven't ended up putting with my comp ones. Um, not that I am a girl that competes very often, but there we go. Um, but yeah, I have loads, I have like a real bright one. I quite like wearing this one for hacking because then people can see us coming by. Um, but yeah, there are so many in there. All, basically all the Lemure colors because every now and again they'll message me being like hey can you take some photos in this particular color because it's coming back in stock or I don't know something like that and then in the last drawer if I can get it open 
I have all of my boots. So I have basically more of my colourful boots in this bottom drawer. So for example, I had the new spruce here. These boots, um, I'm pretty sure they're called the grafter boots. I love wearing these on Joey when I lunge him. Um, because they are brushing boots, it just protects his legs a little bit more because he can be a little bit silly and a little bit excited on the lunge. So um, I also have like my overreach boots. These are Joey's like field ones, which are a little bit disgusting at the moment. Um, but yeah, I've got like my cross country boots in here. Not that I use them that often because um, actually to be fair with Casper back in the day, we used to do a lot of cross country together when we were in pony club. But nowadays I am definitely more of a show jumper. Um, but anyway, I will shut that all up. And that is pretty much everything in my chest of drawers. So we'll now move on to my gentleman's wardrobe. <laughs> also, before I show you that, I almost forgot. I do have this kind of floor length mirror here, which is great for outfit picks, I've got to say. However, what is difficult with this is, if I'm filming a video like this today, um, the cameraman is not very happy because he's trying to not get in the mirror. So in today's video, you might be able to play a game called Spot the Cameraman. If you do, let me know in the comments, maybe put some like bonus points in there, how many times you spot him. But anyway, I do probably need to clean this mirror because it's a little bit dirty. I also have these like wine crates that I keep some of my boots in as well. So that's a little bit different. I think it's because I wanted to try and put as much on the walls as possible so they didn't seem empty. But also I feel like walls are just a really good storage space, especially as I wanted it to be quite open in here because I know how kind of tight it can sometimes feel in a tack room especially as my one before this was I didn't even it wasn't even half the size I'd say it was like a quarter of the size so um things have definitely expanded a lot over the years but a lot of that is definitely down to my very very generous sponsors so anyway on to the gentleman's wardrobe now I've shown you my grandma furniture welcome to my granddad furniture um this is actually cool well I think it's a gentleman's wardrobe at the charity shop, that's what they called it. So here we go. Um, it's actually very useful. This is almost kind of like my tack locker, I guess you could say, but I'm just gonna open it up for all of you. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna stand in front of this bit first and we'll go through this section that I have here. So at the top, I have my air jacket for cross country. Then I have my list of clippers. And if I move the bag very kindly, um, I actually have all of my farrier's tools in here. I have some matches, don't know what that's for. Um, you know, lots of bits, bits and bobs. I've got buffer. Basically, if you're wondering, Esme, why do you have farrier's tools? That is because um, when you uh, keep your horses at a private yard and it's a Sunday and you have a horse that decides to half take one of its shoes off but doesn't completely take it off properly and you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I have the tools and I've been taught by a farrier on how to remove a shoe, which I have done more times than I would like to say, especially when Joey went for a baby phase and wanted to take his shoes off all the time. So anyway, that's why I have them. So it's actually very useful to have some farrier tools on the yard with you. I also have another set of clippers. Um, I have like some smaller ones for like doing some more sensitive and delicate areas. Um, and then in here I have my show ear bonnets that I was talking about with my fly veils. So I have all of my kind of more neutral coloured ones which are easier to find. Um, then, you can tell it's a little bit old. There we go. <laughs> then in here I have all of my lunging equipment. So I have my like roller and all that kind of stuff. And then in the last drawer, I haven't actually been here. What is in here? Um, I have some spare stirrup irons. I have, I literally have not, I cannot remember when I last went in here. I have some helmet covers for traveling and things. I've got some old high vis. Oh, I found your hat. Found the cameraman's hat. There we go. I'll pop that over on the side. There we go. <laughs> it's amazing what you can find when you root through things. I have some spare um, brushing boots, which are pretty snazzy. Um, for, I often use those for lunging as well. And then if we go around to the other side, tell you what, I'll do it this side. There we go. Then if we come around here, we have a shelf of miscellaneous objects. So I've got a spare hairbrush. Oh, I have my EQ bands. I love using these when riding on the horses because they kind of like basically you strap yourself into them and then they kind of help you put yourself in the correct position so you use the correct muscles. Um, I have some tape because that is always useful. Um, I have also, if I pull this out, which is quite snazzy, I have um, my body protectors. So I have like this one that I would use if I was going, like, going cross country or arena cross country. And then if I'm show jumping, 
you'll probably always see me wear this nowadays if I'm show jumping. This is my shadow. Um, I really need to put it in the wash because as you can probably see, I have lived in this. So basically it's back protector, but you don't feel as kind of, how do I say it? Sometimes in a body, body protector, you feel like you can't move as much because you're kind of like in like a little box. This, it honestly doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything. Obviously it doesn't protect you as much. So if you're ever doing cross country or arena cross country or jumping any sort of solid fences, always make sure you've got your proper um, to the standards body protector. But for show jumping, I do love to wear this. Um, and then if I shove it in, do, 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 do. underneath, I have some more EQ bands. I have some more clippers. And then I also have a load of rosettes that I just haven't put up yet. I have like a little rosette cork board that I'll show you in a sec. But um, yeah, I have some that I've, was it this year? This year and last year. No, I've only done one show on Joey this year. Anyway, last year I got quite a few rosettes and dressage with Joey, so that was quite good fun. Um, but yeah, also up here I have a spare grooming kit. This is like a really nice one that I kind of leave for shows, special occasions, filming, because all the brushes are clean. When you have very muddy horses that live outside most of the time, your grooming brushes can get quite dirty, so it's very nice to have a separate grooming kit for that but also Lumio were just very generous and sent me another one so that's like my spare one sorry i had to do a little bit of a reposition because if not you can literally just see the cameraman in the mirror but anyway um behind me here you can see my cork board with a few of the rosettes that i've got from like pony club and that kind of thing over the years um also have my sink so in there i have like my tack cleaner my leather conditioner i also have like a little pot where I have some spray and like some tack cleaning spray which is quite useful like just to have some cleaning spray because it does get quite dirty around here. I also have a um, towel covering where basically under the sink because number one a towel is useful and number two you can't see all the pipes of under the sink which looks a little bit ugly um, but yeah that is my tack cleaning area. I also wait a sec I also have this, which a lot of you guys are gonna be like, what is that? It probably looks a bit like some sort of medieval device. Um, it is not, it's actually a hook for hanging my bridle on, which I still have not hung up yet, which I really need to do. I think it's because um, I, I got it and then it's just been sitting on the side and I've been too busy doing up my own cottage rather than finishing off the tack room. But anyway, there's, I feel like with these sort of things, there's always something that you need to do that you haven't done yet. So. In today's video, this is my message to you. You know that thing that you haven't done that you really need to do? Go and do it, try and do it this week. Anyway, that, this is my thing that I need to try and do this week. But anyway, I'm gonna try and hang it up by like a chain or something, and then I can hang my bridle on, it's just a lot easier to clean. On a hook, sometimes I find you can't get round all the edges, or if it's kind of like on a wall, then the wall gets dirty. So anyway, I need to hang this up. There we go, I'll pop it back now. In here, I also have a washing up bowl, which apparently for my guys over in the US, you don't really use these, but they're very common in the UK, especially if you have a porcelain sink, because if, for example, you have like a china plate, a porcelain sink, you, you know, you're doing your washing up, it's bashing about, it's probably likely that something is gonna smash. So having a plastic bowl, less likely to end up having some smash, smashage, smashage. That's like my new word, sorry. Just think I invented, okay, that's all right. I'm getting way, oh, this coffee is really hitting me. Smashage? Smashage? Smash, 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 smashage. No, that doesn't sound right, it sounds like sausage. Anyway, there's gonna be no smashing of plates. Um, anyway, I have one because if I have something really, really muddy, like there are little chunks of mud and leaves, especially if I've hacked Casper, we've galloped across the bridle path and he is disgusting or his tack's disgusting, I'll wash it in the washing up bowl and then I don't have to worry about the mud clogging up the sink. I can just, you know, ditch the dirty water. So um, that's actually quite useful. Um, so I quite like to have it just because it's a bit easier than cleaning out the sink sometimes. So there we go. If I don't use it, I do quite like to have it tipped upside down like that. But there we go. Also, I have a little bit of a backsplash, which is an old plank of wood that I found. Um, and then we also have Casper and Joey's old shoes, which I've spray painted gold just to be a little bit extra and also match all the mirrors um, on the kind of backsplash that we have here. Again, made out of old wood. Of course, 
I have another mirror. Although, I was gonna say, how many are there? There's three mirrors, which I feel like is quite a lot for a room. But then again, I feel like mirrors are great because they make a room feel really big and they're great for like little mirror selfies and stuff like that. But anyway, I have some more old pictures of horses. This one is actually a little bit wonky. I'm just gonna, there we go. That's a lot better. Sorry, that was really annoying me. Um, here we also have the work surface, which um, is made of fake wood. So it was cheap and cheerful. Um, but this is very cool. I feel like I'm I'm very, very lucky to have a tack room that is, number one, big enough to have an actual worktop. So this is great for putting all of my tack on when I'm cleaning it. It also becomes a bit of a dumping ground, especially if I have like a huge box or something and then it just, yeah. This, this is a good dumping ground, but it's clear, it's tidy. This is definitely what it's always like. Anyway, um, moving on, I have my saddle pads. You guys know my saddle pad collection has been growing for a number of years now. Um, I would say the majority of these have all very kindly been given to me by Lemieux, who are one of my sponsors, and there are a lot. I literally have a rainbow of saddle pads. I think I have like every single colour they've ever released since. When did I start working with them? 2018, I want to say. It was when they sent me like one of their saddle pads, but I obviously had stuff from them before then. So I don't know. I want to say I've been collecting pads from them since 2016. I want to say something along those lines. It's been a long time. Either way, the collection has grown a lot over the years and it's actually really useful having all of the colors because some colors might come back into collection again or if a new collection is out, um, you guys often love seeing color comparisons. So let me give an example. When Spruce came out, a lot of you wanted to see what it was like compared to Hunter Green, like previous colors and things like that. So there we go. But yes, there's, there's quite a few in here. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Lumiere color is. This is a question I get asked all the time. And I feel like it's so tricky. I would say, I really like all of the pastel colors that they released for spring, summer 23. So I love the wisteria. I love the, where's the mist? There we go. I love the mist as well. So like a pastel pink, pastel purple, not pink, a pastel blue and a pastel purple. But then I also, for the winter, love the really deep, rich colors. So I've got to say the new spruce is probably one of my favorites. It looks so good on Joey. And then I also love like a dark burgundy color. So. I think I'm gonna probably have to say I really like, where is it? Here it is, the Rioja. I feel like that dark burgundy color looks so good on a dapple gray, which is obviously what Joey is. So there we go. This is the collection, the obsession. And then there's, there's even more, there's even more. This is bad. Down here, I have a little section where I have extra pads. So down here I have, let me grab it. I have all of like my dressage pads. So because they're a different shape to my CC or my close contact or my jumping pads, I just find it looks more organized if they're separated. And also a lot of the time I'm like, am I jumping? Am I doing dressage? Which one do I need? Um, but yes, I also have my collection of head collars or halters for people that aren't British. I get, to, this is something I get told off for all the time. In the UK, we often call them head collars, but I know a lot of people don't call them that, they call them halters, but anyway, I'm gonna call them, carry on calling them head collars. Um, so I have all of my leather ones, which are kind of like my fancier ones. So um, I like to wear these if I take the horses out in the horse box, um, just because it's a little bit safer to have a leather head collar on. Um, but also they look a little bit more fancy as well. Uh, and then I have quite a lot of leather head collars that have like a little touch of color. This one's actually a little bit disgusting, I need to clean that. So I have like my spruce one. And then I've tried to kind of organize them. It doesn't look very organized, but it is in my brain of which horse is which. And then obviously we have Duke's, which is literally a foal head collar. Duke is so tiny. Um, yeah, he has a foal sized one. So I'm waiting for Lemieux to make some even smaller ones because he doesn't even fit in the Shetland size ones. So there we go. Anyway, um, moving on, we have actually talking about dressage over here. I have my um, dressage saddle. Uh, this is the Adelaide dressage saddle from Voltaire Design, so this is Joey's one. Again, we have a few little Swarovski crystals on there, so very, very fancy. Very, very grateful to have this and ride Joey in it. Ooh, there we go, put the cover back on. I also have Joey's dressage girth on top, 
And then um, this is actually from SIBO. It's the, like a little tack cart, which is very useful. I mean, it's quite nice to move around also for filming and things to have something like in the middle, but also you can move it around for if I'm doing tack cleaning, that kind of thing. And underneath, I keep all of my boots. So for example, I have like these ones. I'd say the boots that I keep in here are my ones that I use more often. So like my tendon boots for show jumping, um, some dress, blah, blah, blah. Some, okay, I have my tendon boots for show jumping. I have some brushing boots for dressage or flat work, um, that kind of thing. So I also have some reflective boots as well, which are new, which are very snazzy. These are great for hacking, especially um, now we're in the winter. They're very useful. You want to be seen out there. Um, but anyway, yeah, they're all my kind of like neutral everyday boots that don't necessarily go with a certain set. They just kind of go with everything. And then next to that, I have um, this is a really, oh no, I'm dropping everything, dearie me. Um, I have a really old um, saddle stand, which is useful for putting saddle pads on if they get really wet, if I've been hacking in the rain, or maybe in the summer if my horses have got really sweaty. And then I have some, oh no, the jelly is jiggling. And then I have some jelly pads um, that I use sometimes. And then I have um, this half pad from Lemire, which you can put shims in. So this is really useful when Joey was changing shape loads. Um, I used that quite a bit, but now his saddle fits him beautifully and he is not changing shape as much, which is great now he's older. Um, I also have my competition pads here. I have some competition pads that I have not washed yet that I need to wash. And then I have some competition pads here that I have not used yet. So there we go. Um, and then I have lots of head collars all in the different colours. I'd say this orchid one is probably one of my favourites. So I've tried to kind of organise them in colour, colour coded collections. I definitely, I put the ones at the bottom that I use the most. So they tend to be a little bit more muted just because I find them a bit more practical, especially as we're in winter now. And then I have all the bright kind of summery ones up at the top. But there we go. I feel like that is pretty much the whole tack room tour. I don't know if there's anything else to show you. I think. That is pretty much it, but um, yeah. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the tack room tour. Let me know what your favorite part is as well. I mean, I think you've got to say the saddle pad collection is probably up there because I feel like I do have more saddle pads than most tack shops, which is ridiculous and nobody should ever own this many saddle pads. I think my favorite part has to be probably my grandma um, sideboard just because I feel like it's so inventive and so different. Like not many people probably have that idea or have done that in their tack room. So I'm gonna have to go with that, especially as my parents had no faith in me. They did not trust the process, but I think it looks quite good. Anyway, that is my tack room. I just want to say again, how grateful I am for all of you who watch my videos. You are the reason why I'm able to have such an incredible tack room, have all the sponsors that I work with and that kind of thing. So thank you ever, ever so much from the bottom of my heart. I really do mean it, but yeah. Thank you for watching. This has, again, been a really requested video, so I really hope you all enjoyed it. Also, if you could like and subscribe for today's video, that would be incredible. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time. Bye.